In this video, I'm going to introduce the modules that make up Design Forward. You should be seeing now um, the Design Forward website and the best place to go to get um, information about all of the different modules in the program is um, by going to the modules menu and clicking on this main link um, on the Design Forward website. On this page, you'll find an overview of the entire program and I'm just gonna briefly run through it. Um, there's nine modules that make up Design Forward plus the orientation experience, which is what you're in now. Um, orientation, as you know, is an introduction to Design Forward, an introduction to the modules, an introduction to the philosophy of the program, and an introduction to the website and the tools and spaces in which you'll be interacting. The modules themselves are divided into two groups. The first group are called core modules. Um, and we call them core modules because the topics they cover are really at the core of conversations about teaching. So um, we have a module called Introduction to Pedagogy, which is um, a great program, particularly if you're newer to teaching and you really want to um, have conversations and learn more about sort of basics of, of pedagogy and approaches um, to pedagogy. But it's also um, a useful program if you're a more experienced pedagogue and you really want to re-engage with the conversation um, and uh, talk a little bit about how all of this plays out in your actual um, classrooms and courses that you teach. Um, in addition, we have a, a module called Introduction to Critical Instructional Design which is focused on applying the concepts of critical pedagogy to um, the practice of instructional design or designing our educational experiences. Critical pedagogy, which is also covered in the Enter to Pedagogy module, um, is a particular approach to pedagogy that focuses on issues of justice and power in the classroom, where power sits and how we as um, instructors can become more aware of those dynamics as a way to build stronger relationships with our students and as a result, help our students to build stronger relationships with their education. Uh, so critical instructional design really applies the lens of critical pedagogy to the practice of instructional design. The rest of the modules focus on particular topics that we chose because we feel like um, the web of these topics um, as they relate to each other really make up um, a framework that's very useful when we're talking about our teaching. The first one here is care and equity, centering humans. Um, and in this module, we really dive deeper into um, practices in our classrooms that can help promote justice and equity, caring for our students, thinking about issues like decolonization of the classroom and the curriculum, understanding what it means for students to have agency in their education and how we can foster co-constructive approaches and mindsets um, to our teaching. Uh, we also talk about alternative assessment um, uh, practices. So if you're interested in ungrading, care and equity is definitely a module where we talk about that as a practice. Formats and modalities, online and beyond, um, is geared towards thinking about um, the formats in which we teach, and in particular, what it means to teach face-to-face -face, versus online. Um, that said, we really try to um, sort of unpack our understanding of modality in this module and recognize that at this point, many of us teach across different modalities all of the time, and that we often, particularly in times that we like we've been experiencing the last few years, have to be prepared to switch modalities or change things up quickly um, based on our particular local contexts or our students' particular needs. And technology and tools, intentional choices is really focused on just what it says, um, what it means to be using technology in the classroom, but we approach this with a real critical eye. So thinking about um, choosing technology with intention. So not just choosing the latest thing because it's what we've been, you know, we've been told everybody's using, not just using things because it's what we're comfortable with thinking about the impact of technology on our students, um, how we have conversations with students about the use of technology in the classroom and how we create spaces where people still have agency and choice, um, even though we are augmenting our pedagogy with technology. 
The last thing I'll say before I move on about these five core modules is, um, A, you don't need to take them in any particular order, as is the case with all of the DF program. Other than orientation, there is no requirement in DF. We encourage you to take modules that resonate with you at the time that they resonate with you. So if you are about to teach online, and really feel like you need a little bit of grounding um, with that topic, then jump right in to formats and modalities. On the other hand, if what you're really interested in is technology, there's no reason why you have to start with something else. You can go straight to tech and tools. On the other hand, if you feel like you'd like to work through these systematically, this is one particular order that you could take the way that they're listed here. Um, the other thing I'll just say before I move on is that the boundaries um, between all of these modules are gray. So it is impossible, for example, to talk about formats and modalities and not talk about technology. And it's impossible to talk about technology and not talk about issues of equity. So um, we really want people to understand that while we've chosen topics to focus our, um, our exploration for these modules, we do not see these as um, black and white um, boundaries. From module to module, there will be opportunities to think about and across modules in any one of the programs. The second set of modules are what we've termed flexible modules, and these are just a little bit different. Um, they allow you to explore design forward and practice design forward in particular contexts, depending on your needs. So this first one, strategic plan alignment, um, is for thinking about the application of um, design forward within the context of our institution and how we might use uh, apply it to our particular strategic goals. So for example, if we have a goal of retention um, and persistence for our students, are there things that we can be doing um, that are part of our approach and design forward that would really help uh, move the needle on uh, persistence and retention? So that, that's just one example, but there are other opportunities and we're open to working with the institution and with groups of folks on campus who want to think about design forward within that context. If that's something you want to do, that's um, welcome you to reach out to us and we can talk about how to put a program together that would align with whatever strategic goal you're trying to address. Advanced seminar is actually modeled upon the very first design fo forward program we ever ran in the summer of 2021. That was the pilot for DF, where we um, had about a group of 10 faculty meet once a week for a month um, to dive a little bit deeper into questions of um, critical instructional design and how it, uh, it impacts all of the various topics I've already talked about. In advanced seminar, this would be a more open-ended exploration really driven by participants' interests. It's an opportunity to dive deeper into some more fundamental readings and resources um, and, and to articulate um, how all of this works with your own personal approach and your personal needs. Cohorts for programmatic design um, is geared for um, programs on campus who um, want to think about curricular design a little bit more holistically. So if you were putting together a new cluster major or a new minor or certificate, or simply uh, rethinking a group of courses and you wanted to think about curricular design and design forward as a, a wrapper for that um, redesign and that experience, we would work with you to put together a program with the folks who you want to have involved. We could help with identifying resources and readings and we could facilitate um, the, the, the program itself, but really it would be driven by your um, particular um, contextual context and local needs. And finally, independent study is for those who want to do something independent. If there's a project that you wanted to work on, a topic or a, re a research question that you have related to design forward, we can facilitate that through an independent study. We would work one-on-one -on -one with you to identify what your research approach would be. We could help, re again, recommend readings and resources, schedule check-ins, um, and facilitate ways for you to share whatever it is that comes out of that experience back with the larger campus. So that is a rundown of all of the DF modules. Um, as I um, said, and I'll just reiterate one more time, the only required one is orientation. Everybody who participates in DF must go through orientation just because otherwise a lot of this wouldn't make sense. Um, but after that, it's really up to you when you participate in a module and um, at, what, at what time and in what order. 
Our goal is to offer a few of these, one or two of these every semester and maybe over the summer so as we gradually ro roll out every module. Um, and then um, as modules roll out, they continue to have a persistent um, presence on the DF website. So at any point, you're welcome to dip into an existing module, take a look at what's there. Even if you're not participating in, in it formally, you can always come back as well after you've taken a module and review anything that was there. Um, we're really trying to imagine DF as both a, um, a programmatic offering that people can experience and go through, but also as a persistent resource and community that we're building here at uh, PSU that allows um, us to develop conversations and languages about our teaching and about our pedagogy that will help us um, all move um, move forward um, with our um, with our goals for. Uh, improving teaching at PSU and improving the, the uh, academic experiences of our students. Thank you.